Hello and welcome to Code Slicing. In this episode, we're going to be recreating and improving on the now playing equalizer bar overlays in the music app to give you an idea of how to create assets like this that you can shove on whatever you like to indicate their state. I think you'll be surprised as to how little code it requires to create something like this, especially using pure Swift UI for the shape design. Obviously, I'm a bit biased, but I'll let you judge for yourselves. I'll be calling out the native versions as we go and providing the source in the description so you can follow along regardless of whether you want to use pure Swift UI or not. Let's get stuck in and right off the bat, we're going to go in hard with some algebra. The reason we need algebra for this is because I want to make the width of the bars size agnostic. Let's take a look. Here's a frame and here's an example of the bars we're going to be creating. Let's define some terms we'll be using. W is the width of the frame and we don't know what that's going to be. WB is the width of the bars and is the thing we are ultimately trying to calculate. WS is the width of the spaces and is going to be based on the size of the bars via the spacer ratio, which is denoted as RS. Lastly, N is the number of bars. So let's plug this into a formula that defines the width of the frame in these terms. The width of the frame is equal to the number of bars multiplied by the bar width, plus the number of bars minus one multiplied by the width of the spaces, since there are always one fewer spaces than bars. We also know that the width of the spacer is equal to the bar width multiplied by the spacer ratio. So we can replace the spacer width in the previous equation with that and get this. We now have the bar width as a common factor in the addition, so we can rewrite it like this. And since we're actually calculating the size of the bars here, we can rearrange this equation to calculate for that. Now, we don't know what the width is going to be, so that's still an unknown in our formula. What we're going to do is normalize the right side of the equation by dividing both sides by the width. This means that we end up with a value that is the width of the bar divided by the width of the frame and will give us the width of the bars when we multiply it by the width of the frame. The great thing about this is that the result is completely independent to the size of the frame. So this can be calculated up front as a constant. Let's do that now. First of all, we need the number of bars, which we'll set to five. Then we need the spacer width ratio, which is a CG float, and we're going to set that to 0 0.2. And now we need our little formula here, which is going to be bar width scale factor. And that is going to be equal to one over the number of bars. We need that as a CG float. And we're going to add to that the number of bars minus one, also as a CG float. And we're going to multiply that by the spacer width ratio. Now that we have our scale factor, we need a width. So we're going to replace all of this with a geometry reader. And the first thing we want to calculate is the width of the bars using our constant. Let bar width be equal to the width of the geometry proxy scaled by the bar width scale factor. And at this point, let's resume so we can see our progress. Our bars are going to live in an H stack. Since we know the bar width and we know the spacer width ratio, we can just calculate it for ourselves and set the spacing of the H stack to that. So let's put that in now. Let the spacer width be equal to the bar width times the spacer width ratio. H stack with a spacing equal to the spacer width. And before we build our actual bars, let's just put in some rectangles to represent them. So. In a for each block, we're going to go to the number of bars, index in, rectangle. Let's fill it with red and then give it a width only of the bar width. Let's resume. Let's just give it a frame of 200. Okay, so it looks like everything is working as we expect. And now we can move on to defining our specific shape that is going to handle the bar animation for us because we want the bars to grow from the bottom between certain heights and that's the animation that we want to control. So we need a shape that is going to allow us to do that. Let's start with defining one here and call it bar. And this shape is going to have a few properties which are going to allow us to tell it which heights to animate between and where that animation is. We're going to say min height fraction, which is a CG float. And we're going to need a max height fraction. 
we're also going to need an animatable data because we're going to be animating this shape. Our animatable data, which is going to be a CG float. Now, if you're not familiar with animatable shapes, I've done a tutorial on animating things where I go into a little bit more detail, but very briefly, the framework needs an animatable data property that it can use to iterate over different values based on the animation curve we're providing. It sounds all very complicated when you don't know about it, so I'll leave a link in the description to a series from SwiftUI Lab that goes over this in a lot of detail. But let's move on. And we're going to have an initializer here, which is going to allow us to, instead of passing animatable data, we're going to pass something called the completion, which is a lot more user friendly, since animatable data is an implementation detail that we really want to hide. In it, and we'll grab min height fraction. We'll also put the max height fraction in there. And then we'll say completion, which is a CG float. We'll set these properties. And we'll set the animatable data to be equal to the completion. Very nice. So now that we've got something that will compile, let's go up to this rectangle. And instead of rectangle, we'll use our bar. And we need to pass in the min height fraction, which we're going to set to 0.1. The max height fraction, which I'm actually going to set to 1 here. But you can set that to whatever you like. And in fact, you can randomize this at some point in the future if you want to. But we're going to stick with 0.1 and 1. And the completion is going to be 0.5. Now we can resume. There's nothing there. So let's go down to our bar implementation here. The first thing we need to calculate is the height of the bar. So that is going to be a combination of the min height fraction, the max height fraction, and the completion. So we can work out where it's going to be between those limits. There's a very easy way to do this in Pure Swift UI. We will say that the height fraction is going to be equal to the min height fraction, and we're going to use the extension 2, which allows us to iterate between one value and another based on a factor. So I select that one, and I pass in the max height fraction, and then I give it the factor that we want to apply. 0 would be min height fraction, and 1 would be max height fraction. You can go beyond those, but that's what we're working within today. So all I need to pass it is the animatable data because we know that's going to be the completion of the bar. Now we need a rectangle that's going to use that. So we have a rectangle here, and we're going to transform that into the one we need. And again, that is very easy to do. We're going to add a rectangle to the path and pass in a rectangle. And that rectangle is going to be the original rectangle, scaled, and we're going to be passing in a size that is going to represent the scale factors for the width and the height. The width is easy, we just pass in 1 for that. The height is the fraction of the original rectangle height that we want to use. So all I pass in is the height fraction. And now we need to think about where do we want this thing to be and how do we want to anchor it to that position. So the at is quite easy. We want that to be at the bottom of the original rectangle. Rect bottom. And by default, the anchor for this scaling is the top leading point of the rectangle. That's no good for us. We want to anchor it to the bottom, so it grows from there. So that's easy. We just pass in bottom. And that is all we need to do. As you can see, the native version requires quite a lot of jumping through hoops to achieve the same thing. I'm actually going to be releasing the design-orientated aspects of the Pure Swift UI framework in their own package called Pure Swift UI Design, which is now in beta, so I'll leave a link to that if you want to give it a try. So let's go back up to our view. Do a quick build to get rid of that annoying warning. The first thing we're going to need is a state private variable that is going to tell us whether or not we're animating. Animating is false. And on appear, we want to set that to true. I'm not using an animation block here because I want each of the bars to have their own animation. So I will be using implicit animations for that. So let's put that animation in. Animation, and we'll just put an ease in out for now. Uh, we'll repeat that forever with an auto reverse of true. And then we'll make sure that the completion is based on whether or not we're animating. So it's fully complete if we are animated and zero if we're not. So at zero, it's going to be at a fraction of 0 0.1. And if we're animating, it's going to be the full height. Let's resume and see what that looks like if I play it. Okay, wonderful. This is looking pretty good. Let's stop that 
And now we need to think about applying different animations to each bar. There are a few things we're going to be doing to this animation, so instead of doing it all in line, let's write a function that is going to create the animation for us. Private func create animation, which is going to return an animation. And this animation, it is going to be an ease in out, but the duration is going to be randomized. So we'll start with the duration of 0 0.8. We're going to add to it a random value in the range of minus 0 0.3 and positive 0 0.3. We want this to repeat forever, with auto reverse is true again, and that's fine, but let's see what happens if I replace this with create animation. And then I resume, and then play. And there we go, that's looking pretty good, but as you can see at the beginning there, they all start together, don't they, before they look a little bit random. So let's start again. You see they all grow at the same time. So what I want to do is add a delay to each of these animations. So we'll put this down here and say that the delay is going to be, again, a random value between 0 and 0 0.75. Now it's important to put the delay after the repeat or the delay will also be part of the repetition and we only want to apply the delay to the start of the animation. Now let's play that again and see what it looks like. And there we go, much better. They're behaving randomly right from the beginning. And do you know, I think we're done. Now all we need to think about is what's the size of this thing? Let's stop that and go down to our main frame here and just set that to say 20. And that gives us something that we can use as an overlay or we can make it bigger. I mean, you can make this thing whatever size you like. So you can drop that on whatever asset you want and use these principles that we've learned to make your own overlays that are going to make something look wonderful. But you might be wondering, what is the performance of this thing? Well, let's have a look, shall we? I'm warning you now, the simulator does not like this very much. But once it actually starts animating, you'll see that it does so without noticeably dropping any frames. So as long as you don't need more than a few hundred of these things, I think you'll be fine. What I will say is that if you want to put effects on this, like shadows, then I would recommend putting the whole thing in a drawing group so it is applying those effects to a rasterized image, essentially, instead of the individual views. But remember, we're talking about hundreds of instances of this thing. So in normal situations, this won't be an issue. As I said before, there are things you can change about this by randomizing the height fractions there, so feel free to do that in your own time. But that's it for now, and in the next episode, I'm going to show you how you might go about applying these overlays. So join me for that. It's going to be brilliant. If you like that, don't forget to like the video. If you want to see more of this kind of thing and you're not subscribed, consider doing that. And you might find that that is something that happens and you might just feel better for it. I don't know, maybe you will, maybe you won't. But why take the chance? Hit that subscribe button and let's find out together. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please leave them below. But in the meantime, thanks for joining me. See you next time.